This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, Labour leader Jacinda Ardern was in Dunedin pressing the flesh and announcing policy. With the Oha fire under control, the long road to recovery begins for devastated residents. And two young girls from the same skilled family score hole in ones in Dunedin. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. Prime Minister and Labour Party leader Jacinda Ardern was in Dunedin today on a campaign trail launching her party's environmental policy. Ardern made the announcement amidst visits to businesses and a walkabout in the centre of town. An enthusiastic crowd welcomes Prime Minister Jacinda Ardern to the University of Otago. She started the day with a visit to precision engineering business United Machinists, where she and Southern Labour candidates spent time talking with staff before heading to the Octagon. Ardern's walkabout took her along George Street, where she popped into Granny Annie's sweet shop. I just wanted to say we really appreciated the great substitute during oh, lockdown. Awesome. It's been great support to us. Before picking up a takeaway lunch and a familiar eatery. You were the only one. David had a little broken there in the previous visit. Are you having these here? Or? Uh, if we could do them takeaway. Then. Yeah, yeah. While the Prime Minister is firmly on the glad handing campaign trail, pressing the flesh as much as one can in the COVID era, she also had policy to announce. We have to make sure that we are targeting those areas where we do see a significant contribution to our emissions. Um, and industrial heat is one of them, uh, and so this is why we are taking those next steps. Phasing out fossil fuel burners and decarbonising public transport buses are among the Labour Party's next steps to reduce climate emissions in New Zealand. Oh, look, our view is that the clean car standard was where we should be investing our energy and also you'll see today announcements around public transport and cleaning up that fleet too. During her visit to Dunedin, the Labour leader also pledged her party's support of agricultural climate change research programmes. In Dunedin, the South Today. The Queenstown contracting company has been fined $275,000 after a heavy roller driven by an unlicensed driver plunged 20 metres down a bank. In May 2018, the company was working on the shoulder of a road between Frankton and Kingston in Queenstown. Despite previously having been warned over an unlicensed employee operating the seven-ton roller, an inexperienced worker drove too close to a steep drop-off. The worker suffered serious injuries, including compound fractures in his lower leg and a punctured lung. The victim was airlifted to hospital, where he spent nearly three weeks. As well as the $275,000 fine, Wilson contractors have been ordered to pay $50,000 to the victim. It's a long road ahead for residents of Oha Village as the fire continues to rage through thousands of hectares of vegetation in the Mackenzie Basin. Winds reaching up to 160 kilometres per hour forced helicopters to stay on the ground and made firefighting challenging yesterday. Fire and Emergency New Zealand say there's been little fire activity overnight in Oho, and cooler conditions today are good for firefighting. Civil Defence Incident Controller Murray Linwood says warning systems worked well. Some people um, responded to that warning system, other people slept through it, and the stories of people going door knocking, the stories of people going and alerting that it's not just a fire alarm for firefighting services, it means get out. Look, uh, the challenges are the environment themselves, and we've got uh, probably 30% of our area is on uh, steep high country, and then of course we've got the ease of access around farmlands, etc. But we've got the complexity in the fire itself of the, uh, the village and those affected properties and the residents of it. Ground crews and heavy machinery are working to manage flare ups and further secure and control the fire perimeter. Residents have been allowed back in to see what's left of their properties, as well as to collect essential items spared from the inferno. They're being escorted by fire people. Um, that's a managed um, 
exercise and they've um, they've gone and sort of triaged the people and, and worked out a roster. There'll be more going in tomorrow. Volunteer firefighter Kerry Jackson's tanker crew were the first on the scene very early Sunday morning, saying they knew everyone needed to leave as soon as possible. Um, very surreal. Um, we knew that the fire was going to overtake the village pretty soon um, with all that the kind of ash activity and hot ashes that were blowing through. Um, we knew that it was definitely a ticking, ticking time bomb there. She says they saw flames reaching up to 15 metres into the air. A southerly wind change today is set to bring cooler conditions and potentially rain to the area, which will please those firefighters still on the ground. In Twizel, the South Today. An historic home which formerly housed an art gallery in Invercargill has received a cash injection from the City Council. Anderson House was used as a public art gallery until it was closed in 2014 due to earthquake concerns. This week, councillors discussed the future of the almost 100-year-old Neo-Georgian building. They've now approved up to $400,000 to be spent on urgent maintenance work to keep the heritage building watertight. They've also been given the green light for another $800,000 to be spent on bringing the building up to a standard for public use. Currently the building is rated as less than 10% of earthquake code. An eight-year-old girl in Dunedin scored a hole-in-one at a local golf course recently, but it's nothing new for her family as her older sister scored a hole-in-one at the same spot four years ago when she was only six years old. Dunedin's sisters Maya and Ahakira Kone have both had good luck on the fifth hole of Island Park Golf Course. Four years ago, Ahakira achieved a hole in one when she was only six years old. I thought it was a real bad shot, um, and my dad said it might have gone too far, but then we couldn't find the ball, so my dad just said to look in the hole, and then, yeah, it just came true. And now, Ahakira's younger sister, eight year old Maya, has also achieved a hole in one at the very same spot on the course. I was hoping to get a hole in one, and when I hit my shot, I thought it was a bad shot, just like my sister. And then my brother, when he was near the green, he said that I got it in the hole, but I didn't really believe him. The two girls aren't sure if they're planning to become the next Lydia Ko, but they do appreciate the encouragement their father Dan Coney is putting into developing their skills on the fairways and greens. Yeah, he helps me a lot with my golf and we normally do a lot of lessons, like every second Wednesdays we go to Shelley and Shelley Duncan and she just helps us with our golf and stuff. The girls already compete in local golf tournaments on a regular basis. In Dunedin, the South today. Still to come on the South today, young anglers are invited to catch specially tagged kraut released in Dunedin's prime fishing spots. And a Dunedin man adds value to technology he's creating with art. Hi, our Campbell means where? We're back in George Street, on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell Menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. You've seen us in the street. Now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7.
menswear, it fits. Welcome back. A Dunedin man is adding value to the stereo speakers he's making by having artists illustrate the loudspeakers. The idea is the brainchild of Dunedin sound engineer Tex Houston. Tex Houston started making his Tex Tone speakers about four years ago and he's been developing them ever since. 24 layers of plywood cut with a robotic jigsaw make up each speaker. On advice from his family, he approached Dunedin artists David Kilgar and Nicola McLaren to illustrate the speakers. Since then, he's had other artists, such as flying nun stalwart Chris Knox, contribute to the growing collection of sonic artworks. The painted speakers cost nearly $9,000, with $2,000 going back to the artist. In Dunedin, the South today. Young anglers are invited to try and catch one of six specially tagged trout released in Dunedin's prime fishing spots. The lucky anglers will win a rod and reel set if they bring in the tag to Otago Fish and Game offices. Calling all junior anglers. Dunedin's Tomahawk Lagoon, Sullivan's Dam and Southern Reservoir have seen a release of three pairs of rainbow trout each weighing about one to two kilos and sporting a tag on their back. It's now up to anglers under 18 years of age to try and catch these tagged fish. And while this competition has been done elsewhere for cash prizes of sometimes $10,000, Otago Fish and Game Officer Steve Dixon says the Dunedin prize is more down to earth. You know, down in the south, you know, it, we don't. Now, ten thousand dollars is is a lot of money, so uh, a rod and reel is, is is better for a junior angler, uh, just to get them get them started into um, into fishing. Now, these these rod and reel sets were donated by Mike Teasdale Motors on Corker Valley Road. So, Mike is a um, is a volunteer ranger and, and a fisherman from a long time ago. So, yeah, he's donated the prizes for the for these tag fish. Fishing license fees go towards regular restocking of trout fishing spots around Otago that don't suit natural spawning. So I manage a trout hatchery at McRae's Goldmine and, and we just bring fish back to town and, and stock those three reservoirs. We've also got uh, half a dozen uh, reservoirs throughout Otago that, that we do the same thing. We stock those because there's no natural spawning in any of those as well. Dixon says these tagged fish will definitely be biting, but the only way for a youngster to catch them is to buy a $27 licence and get out to one of Dunedin's three prime fishing spots. You, you gotta you gotta put your lure in the water or your fly in the water to try and catch one. Um, you know they they are big fish, um, so they will need to eat, and um, so yeah, you just gotta get out there and give it a go, really. The Otago Fish and Game Hatchery raises between six and eight thousand trout a year, in Dunedin, the South today. New Zealand's general election is to be held on Saturday, October the seventeenth. Over this week, the South Today is bringing you a series of quick statements from the leaders of the five main contending parties. Tonight we bring you Judith Collins, the leader of the National Party. Hi, I'm Judith Collins, leader of the National Party. I'm here to tell you to party vote national, please. We need to party vote national because we need national-led government for the, after this election. We're going into tough economic times, absolutely tough economic times. We cannot muck around. We have to get on to saving people's jobs, jobs, jobs. That's what I'm most focused on. And, if, and we will keep the borders safe. I'm not letting COVID-19 into New Zealand. I have a zero approach to COVID-19 and we are going to keep people focused on jobs, get the infrastructure built, get the transport built, sort out water, sort out issues that need sorting out and we'll crack down on the gangs as well while we're at it. It's really important you vote for delivery. I'm the leader of the National Party and we deliver. Otago and Southland need a government that delivers. You don't want to be seen as something that we've been taken for granted by any party. We're the party of infrastructure, we're the party that gets stuff done and if we tell you we're going to do it, we'll do it. I can make decisions, I can sort out things very quickly 
and that means that you don't have to wait around wondering what the government's going to do. We're after jobs and jobs and more jobs and those are jobs for New Zealanders making sure that we sort out issues whether it's TY Point or whether it's actually making sure that the Otago University is still getting the number of students that it needs. We're about jobs for this country and we're about the future with a party for that. Vote National. After the break on the South today, there's good news for electric vehicle owners in the South and we check out tomorrow's weather. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a MOLMAP. MOLMAP is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Back in George Street, on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell Menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. <laughs> Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh! Plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz a poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. Welcome back. Electric vehicle owners in the south can relax knowing there are qualified mechanics available to repair their cars. The first year-long course at the Otago Polytechnic for electric vehicle mechanics is now nearing completion. These are just some of the first students set to complete the new electric vehicles program at the Otago Polytechnic. Their teacher Kevin O'Neill says the graduates will give confidence to potential electric car buyers that their vehicle can be looked after by a qualified mechanic. One of the big visions we had at the start was to ensure that uh, consumers going into this market and looking at buying electric vehicles will have the uh, faith that the industry has responded so that they know the vehicles can get uh, repaired and, and you know, maintenance. O'Neill says the growing shift to electric vehicles will be one of the biggest changes the automotive industry has seen in recent times. And the Polytechnic has spent several years planning the Level 5 program. The course has been three years in the making, from when we first envisioned getting it created, to designing all the content, um, running it through industry, 
and then obviously getting through the students in the first year. The one-year part-time program is delivered on campus as well as online in a range of block courses, with room for a total of 80 students a year. So the course is broken into four sections. Um, automotive management, which is always in every level five automotive course. Uh, auxiliary systems, which they cover high voltage braking systems, uh, high voltage uh, heating and ventilation, and charging systems around the EVs. The next course is on battery systems, so they understand how battery comes together to run the vehicle. It's charge cycle, it's discharge cycle, how to analyse uh, if there's any faults, um, and fundamentally how it works. And then the last section is driveline systems, which covers both electric, hybrid and plug-in hybrid drivetrains, and how they work, like how the motors are actually operated, and how everything works together, and then how to repair and diagnose faults. There are almost a thousand electric cars already registered in Dunedin. In Dunedin, the South Today. Now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Labour leader Jacinda Ardern was in Dunedin today, pressing the flesh and announcing environmental policy. With the Oha fire under control, the long road to recovery begins for devastated residents of the small community. And two young girls from the same skilled family score hole-in-ones in Dunedin. And time now for a look at tomorrow's weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Map. Beginning with the city view, looking at State Highway 1 north of Dunedin from Patmos Overbridge. Looking at the situation, a fine day ahead with plenty of sunshine and land and some coastal cloud. Temperatures will be cold though with frosts in many places tomorrow night. Starting off at the northwest of the South Island, showers with 14 degrees in Greymouth and 12 degrees in Westport. To the northeast, cloudy with 13 degrees in Nelson and 12 degrees in Blenheim. In Canterbury, scattered showers and 9 degrees in Kaikoura, mostly cloudy and 10 degrees in Christchurch, and cloud and 9 degrees in Ashburton. To the southern towns, light winds and fine conditions with 13 degrees in the Catlins, 14 degrees in Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore. In central, Light winds and fine here as well, with 14 degrees in Wanaka, 13 degrees in Queenstown and Tiano, and 15 degrees in Alexandra. To the northern towns, light easterlies and some cloud on the coast, with 13 degrees in Timaru and 12 in Oamaru, and land light winds, fine conditions, and 15 degrees in Twaisal and Omarama. In Dunedin, Cloudy with southwesterlies tonight and an overnight low of 5 degrees. Cloud breaking and sunny periods increasing tomorrow with cold southwesterlies dying out. Northeasterlies later in the day. Light frost possible tomorrow night. A high of 11 and a low of negative 1. Fine and sunny on Friday with northeasterly winds. Breezy in the afternoon. A high of 12 and a low of 6. And at Invercargill, some cloud tonight with an overnight low of 5, becoming fine and sunny tomorrow with moderate cold southerly winds dying out, frosty tomorrow night, a high of 12 and a low of negative 2, milder northerly winds on Friday with sunny periods and high clouds, high of 15 and a low of 7. And that's all for our news this Wednesday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.